it's so beautiful and also so terrifying. It just grabs you on such a primal level. It's impossible not to put yourself in that setting. And what did you say the name of it was again? This is Paradise. For me, it's the main character in this movie, the beach, because all happened in that beach. That beach has a lot of histories and scary things. This is a secret beach, and for her, it's a place where she can be closest to her mother. And it was really, I want to just say, a testament to Jama's vision. I mean, when we were looking for the beach, he said, let's give them something they've never seen before. In Australia, we had to find a beach that looked like a Mexican or Latin American or Costa Rican, isolated, tropical, magical place. We're on a mission to find the best beach in the world. We went to Australia, we're shown wonderful places. Each time, I would be like, it's not good enough. It's not special enough. It doesn't have that wow factor. I want to have this character arrive at this beach, look at it, and the audience have the same feeling that she has. But it has to feel special, it has to feel like mystical. So eventually we convinced the producer, the line producer to take us to Lord Howe. It was Jama, myself, and the, the DP flew out in a little plane, and when we flew over the island for the first time, we could see the beach, and we could feel that there was something special happening. And then when we came to that beach, I mean, there was, it's like we just knew. The script has got a unique requirement for a beach that just looks amazing. Even though we looked at some other options, it really came down to Lord Howe having the unique bay um, that had a real tropical feel. The water was, you know, uniquely tropical. It really is untouched. So this is a two and a half hour flight from Sydney into the middle of the ocean, you know, towards New Zealand and it's a tiny little island, it's, you know, 11 kilometers. And it's an ecotourism resort. Lord Howe Island is really world unique. It's World Heritage listed. It's governed by a national park. All the waters around it are governed by a marine park. And then the people who live on the island, they're all fifth and sixth generation islanders. We were the first large scale film production to be there and not just be on the island, but you know, you know, using every little piece of value that the island had visually. There's a reason no one's ever shot a movie on Lord Howe Island. It is very challenging. Logistically, it was the most complicated thing I think all of us have been involved in. Trying to get a hundred film crew with the full package across the Lord Howe Island, which is about 600 nautical miles east of Sydney, was huge. So we had everything from chartering the landing barges that we put all the trucks on. The crew were all loaded up onto charter flights. There's a very little infrastructure. There is no cellular service. There's very limited Wi-Fi. There are very few cars. We rode our bikes to set, often in the dark, often in the rain. It had its own microclimate, so it was impossible to predict the weather. The weather would shift, or the tides were coming in. Or we had, uh, you know, unique birds that we had to work around. Everything's protected there, so we had to be very conscious of that. The terns were nesting at that time, so we had to be very respectful of the terns. <laughs> One of the main challenges is obviously the fact that you now have 80 people and it's supposed to be a virginal beach. The problem is that once you step on the sand, it stops being virginal. So we had to create these like paths of single file people walking and then try to erase the footprints as much as possible. The crew was so conscientious of that and, and also the fact that I think that when the crew arrived there, they saw that this was such an amazing place. They really were in awe and very respectful of the environment. All of the things that would lead you to believe that it's a place you shouldn't make a movie, we encountered all of them. However, it is also one of the most beautiful places you'll ever see. And we just took those challenges and said, four frames of this beach are worth more than two hours of another beach that is not perfect. It's an incredible place. Like, you could see that fish were like basically almost in the sand. They were not afraid of people and human contact. 
It was really special to get to be there. It was also really neat because we got to put our rock and our buoy out into the middle of the ocean. And everyone left me and went back to shore. And I'm sitting right there in the ocean, 300 yards from shore. There's a helicopter that comes in and does the shot and then flies away. But there was a good 30 minutes where I was just sitting out there on a rock in the ocean. And you really felt the enormity of what that situation would feel like. To think that you're that close to land, that's sort of where you feel safe, but it was neat to experience. So Lord Howe Island really is the heart and the soul of the film. It's the sparkle at the start of the film and it's the bit that then encapsulates the whole audience. The film really honours the Lord Howe location in an incredible way. You really feel that you're always there. It's just this little hidden treasure that I hope we don't <laughs> ruin after this film because everybody's going to want to go there.